Today is Thursday, April 14. I'm Pastor Michael, and this is Wilderness Wanderings. Today, our text comes from Genesis 2 and Revelation 22. Then God planted a garden in Eden in the east. He put the man he had just made in it. God made all kinds of trees grow from the ground, trees beautiful to look at and good to eat. Then the angel showed me water of life river, crystal bright. It flowed from the throne of God and the Lamb, right down the middle of the street. The tree of life was planted on each side of the river, producing twelve kinds of fruit, a ripe fruit each month. The leaves of the tree are for healing the nations. Never again will anything be cursed. The throne of God and of the Lamb is at the center. His servants will offer God service. First, let me apologize for the lateness of Tuesday's edition of Wilderness Wanderings. An official report would say human error. I clicked on the wrong icon when publishing the file, and thus it wasn't sent out. In that edition, I mentioned that my dad was born on April 13, 1937. He did make it to his 84th birthday but he died late in the afternoon, as many of you will know by now. As I spent time with my mom and siblings around his body, I got thinking about our text for today and want to share some of my reflections with you. I had noticed over the past several months that I had been feeling a mild but persistent sorrow in my heart. There are numerous reasons for this sorrow, and I knew that one of them was because of my dad's illness. It seemed to me that it was more about his illness than his impending death. Dr. Neil Plantingat wrote a book about sin titled, Not the Way It's Supposed to Be. As the cancer leached away my father's physicality, I have seen just how apt Neil's title is. Our text tells us that when God created humanity, we were created to live physically on this earth. God made a garden that was both beautiful and useful. The human eye and the human stomach would both enjoy this garden. My dad's legs were the first to go. Last May, I planted his vegetable garden. He was able to enjoy some of its produce. He was able to enjoy some of its produce, even though he was unable to contribute any physical care to the plants. First, his mobility was taken away. Then he gradually lost interest in food. Towards the end, his stomach rejected most offerings. In the end, his eyesight dimmed. It seemed to me it was eaten undone. That is the effect of the human fall into sin. It is right that we grieve it. But thankfully, that is not the end of the story. The Bible has an ending that we are still waiting for. By faith, we eagerly wait for its coming. Notice that the ending also includes trees, or a tree, the tree. How do we picture a tree that is planted on both sides of the river? Yet the purpose of this tree is poignant and clear. It is there for both food and healing. The effects of the human fall into sin are undone. It's Eden 2.0. The visions of Revelation offer us images not just of return to paradise, but a paradise that is even better. In Genesis, God comes to visit his humans in the cool of the day. But in Revelation, he lives with them. On the great day of resurrection, my dad's body will be raised and reunited with his soul. His physicality will be fully restored and more. It will be glorified as Jesus' resurrected body was. In the meantime, it seems to me, he is with the great host in Revelation 7, singing songs of salvation before the throne of God. And if you wonder about the phrase, these are those who came out of the great tribulation, then I refer you to Pastor Anthony's recent sermon on Matthew 24, which is part of our March 7 podcast. I will miss my dad. There is a different sorrow in my heart now. Dad is with our Lord and Savior, and I can say that that is good. I also look forward to the day of resurrection, when we will all be fully physical. Then our service to God will no longer be tainted by our fallenness. We will all serve him perfectly. As you journey on, go with the blessing of God. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm, 
May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Thank you.